for people that don't know, Jeff was actually my first podcast guest, and now you're my first repeat podcast guest. Um, so for maybe people that don't know or that didn't hear the first one, why don't you just start, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the uh, world of photography. Yeah, thank you. Thanks no for problem. having me. No problem. Um, my name is Jeff Moran, and I'm the owner of Box of Dreams Photography. We're primarily a wedding photography studio, me and my fiance. And I would consider us like a, a boutique, mom and pop shop. Yeah. Everything comes through us, whether it's uh, interviews, editing, shooting, all the works goes through us. So we have, a, I like it because we have the like, control of every aspect of production. Yeah, nice, nice. And uh, getting started, uh, me and my lady actually met each other at a photo studio. Real simple operation. It was like for picture day, if you mm. can remember, like in elementary school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so not very technically, you know. Uh, not crazy in terms of of uh, being, what's the word? Technically savvy with photography it was pretty cut and dry. But yeah. uh, me and her got to meet each other, and she actually got a really great job with a photographer in Oceanside. Okay, uh, old school Italian guy. He's really about it. You know, a lot of studios are kind of like factories where it's all about more and more clients. Yeah, this guy was like really big in terms of. We would do contracts that were like twenty thousand dollars just photography, just one wedding. Wow, was that was that Rocco? That's Rocco. Rocco yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, really high end work, and I just started as an assistant, holding his ladder, mm. you know, assisting him with his gear. And uh, five years later, we're shooting weddings with him. We decided to start our own thing, and uh, nice. that's really how we started. Just nice one job to the next. Nice. And um, what type of services do you provide? Is it mainly for weddings, or do you do like? Photo like headshots stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, great too. question. So uh, primarily, we got all of our training in wedding photography, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome. I mean, I really fell into some good, you know, good luck meeting Rocco because every aspect of wedding photography is a different genre of photography. Yeah. So when you're shooting the we wedding rings, that's jewelry. Okay. When the little uh, ring bearer that's scared of me is running around, <laughs> that's child photography. Yes. Portrait photography for the bride. Um, mm. Landscape. Everything's in there. So. Primarily, we are a wedding photography studio, but okay. we do uh, a lot of corporate. Okay. We do food photography. We do family, newborn, basically any anything that comes our way, we try to accommodate yeah. our clients. That's cool. But I really want to transition into um, philanthropy and corporate work. Okay. What, what would corporate work consider? Is that like big conferences and stuff like that? or? Yeah, good question. So one of our bigger accounts is the Hispanic Federation. Okay. And uh, we do annual galas at the Museum of Natural History. Oh, that's cool. They raise tons of money for the Latino community. We work closely with the Coalition for Hispanic Family Services. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of Latino organizations. Uh, my lady, her passion is animals. So she does a pet con. It was at the Javis oh, Center this okay. year. It's almost right. like Comic Con, but for yeah, animals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, there's got to be so many things to shoot that. There's so many things. Yeah. And that's why, you know, weddings are cool, but corporate photography gives us a little bit more of fulfillment because yeah. we're working with organizations that give back. Yeah, that makes sense. And I have to imagine that brings more of like a fun vibe too, like when you go to those type of events. You know, yeah. a little different. Like, I don't know. That's one of the things I like about my industry. You can focus on one thing for a while and then you can kind of move on to something else. So, like, let's just say I'm. I'm loving writing restaurants this whole month. Next month, I might want to write a contract. You know, you switch it up a little bit. Absolutely. So, you know, you do a wedding. One day, you do a photo shoot. Then Absolutely. You do two, then you do a big organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get to switch it up a little bit, you know? Yeah, and it's like, uh, I don't know, my dad's a cop. So he always says, you know, I can't have that job behind a desk. He loves that he's always in the street and every yeah, day yeah. something new. Yeah. Same thing with photography. You never know what you're going to do, yeah, whether it's true. newborn, food. Uh, we, we had the pleasure of shooting Michelle Obama. Uh, Hillary Clinton, J Lo, Ricky Martin. You know we have we had all these doors open for us because of our philanthropic work. Mm -hmm. So um, it's cool. I mean, weddings are great; they pay yeah. great. But uh, I kind of I kind of want to. I don't want to be just a wedding photography studio. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What what's what's your competition look like? Like, how do you guys a How do you guys separate from your competition? And b What like what is your competition? Great question. Because nowadays. A camera is around, a really, really great camera is around $3,000 without the lens. Jeez. You drop another 1500 for a good middle lens, and everybody feels like they're a photographer. Well, yeah, well, I don't mean to cut you off, but it was funny, because when I was looking for a camera for this, I started looking at prices. I was, like, blown <laughs> away. You know, you you see some as high as 5000 Oh, yeah. And then you get kind of nervous, like, okay, if I buy a camera right now for 1200 am I being 
like is the quality not going to be that great and then like you said you buy the camera then you got to worry about the lens which is another few hundred exactly. dollars maybe a thousand dollars exactly so yeah it gets up there but uh you know that that that's to our benefit i tell my my fiance is yeah sure everybody could go buy a five thousand dollar camera and say i'm a professional yeah it's uh it's really a lot more than that and my training with rocco in the years that i've been doing my work we really separate ourselves because of our of our craft mm -hmm. and uh, and the attention to detail yeah. with every single job. What it is though, there's a lot of factories. We call factories, especially in the wedding industry, people who do weddings for starting at fifteen hundred. They have forty photographers under them. Yeah, uh, and they're they're a numbers game. They're not about the art. They're most of the owners of those studios actually are not photographers. They just kind of reach out to other photographers and give out dates at the bare minimum. Okay. And what I try to tell my clients is, it's your wedding day. You dropped 60000 You dropped 100000 Who knows how much you spent? Do you want to go for a wedding studio that they pay their photographers $500 a day? Or do you want to go to a wedding studio where you're actually doing business with that studio? That photographer is the one that's doing it. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many jobs I've done where that guy making five hundred, four hundred dollars a day is like this in cocktail hour. He's like he hates the bride. I or, can't wait to go home. Or he's behind the bar drinking. He's behind the bar <laughs> drinking. They're complaining constantly. In yeah. my head, I'm like, bro, this is like, it seems cliche, but this is their most important day of their life. Be excited about yeah. it. Yeah. I know you do it every weekend, mm -hmm. but like, this is not a, a kind of job where you let's relax today. And I don't, I hate to be here, kind of thing. And that's what you get with these factory studios that have 30 40 50 wedding yeah. photographers yeah and when you did when you did uh my engagement photos like i could tell that whole process you like you made the process fun like you'd make jokes in between the photos like yeah. you know maybe i didn't have my head a certain way you know you would make it you'd make it fun and not you know not like oh damn i gotta take another picture you yeah. know what i mean like you're not miserable during the process yeah absolutely. so you're right that definitely that definitely made a big difference and it wound yeah. up just being a fun day you yeah know? we went to uh fire island yeah that was my first time i was there yeah yeah that was great man yeah. that, that was great um i can't wait to get back there actually it's not going to be anytime soon because it's so cold but <laughs> yeah although i don't know yesterday was like 70 degrees yeah it was nice <laughs> people were golfing yeah i know right? great day. yeah i shot a wedding not yesterday the day before yesterday and man yeah, beautiful. beautiful day, beautiful day, really uncharacteristic from this time of year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like that always happens with weather. There's always like a record setting heat wave <laughs> yeah. or, you know, it's the coldest day of the week, you know, something like that. Um, but back to the business, why don't you um, tell me to, I'm sure there must have been a point where you re you personally like ran into a hurdle with business, Some, somewhere along the lines with business. You hit a hurdle. Like, what was the hurdle, and how did you overcome that? You know what I got. I'm gonna say I spent so many years with my mm -hmm. fiance perfecting the art of capturing a beautiful image. Yeah, I mean, it was all about the image. And there's two different kind of studios. There's the photog the photography studios that focus on the image, mm -hmm. and the photography studios that focus on the business first. Okay, and I. Unfortunately, my hurdle was I was spending way too much time on the actual art. And uh, the guy who taught me everything, in reality, he says, it's 15% the picture. You know, it's 85% business. Mm -hmm. From marketing to your books to, you know, every I'm sure you know, every business has all that stuff in the back end. So yeah. I started that a little bit too late. <clears throat> and um, my hurdle was my books and finding out how much is going in, how much is going out, how can I market, how can I scale my business. Yeah. So that started a little bit too late, unfortunately. But um, you know what? How did I How did I uh, overcome that? Is just reach out to my network. What's good about the photography world is there's a ton of us and we're a small niche group and yeah. you, you put a question out there and everybody's there willing to help. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Right, you know, we got our books together, and now we're really focused a lot more on scaling and getting getting our business side. Yeah, now I mean that's a good point. Networking is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, so speaking of marketing, I've noted I was taking a look at your social media page. You do a good job on Instagram. I saw you got a nice following, like thank a you, little thank over you, seven thousand. Yeah, which is a big deal, man. How do you how do you manage all that? Do you guys try to like? That's so do you guys try to say like, all right, I'm gonna try to post once a day this week, <laughs> or is it, or is it just kind of organic, push it out when it comes in type of thing? Great question. I was spending way too much time on social media. I want my lady watching our shows, and I find myself on my phone. I'm, uh, I'm at the movie theater. I'm at dinner. 
it was I just realized for a small operation that I have, word of mouth and social media is really what we got. Yeah. Because I really don't put money into Google AdWords. I don't put money into studio um, venues to make us house vendors. Yeah. Um, I'm really just putting my money into uh, my time into relationships. Mm -hmm. So to get myself out of off my phone, I decided to use this app called HQ Hopper. Okay. And HQ Hopper basically lets me schedule all my social media posts. So in mm -hmm. the first of every month, I kind of sit down with my cup of coffee or my beer, depending on what time of day yeah. it is. <laughs> and I just go in for a couple of hours and I do all my posts up front. And then I could schedule it. And my, my sweet spot, I try to do three posts a day. Oh, okay. And just show my pictures. And it kind of goes on all my networks from Facebook to Instagram to LinkedIn. And now, yeah, I did a lot mm -hmm. of work on the first. But mm -hmm. now I'm free for the rest of the month to have meetings, do podcasts, kind of get yeah. my name out there. And I'm not, I'm not a slave to my phone anymore. Yeah. Okay. So the first, so what's, the first of the month, you sit down and you do your, you actually write out your post. For the entire month, my hashtags, Man. my my Ooh, caption. That's, nice. that's a good. Idea. I tag that's all my idea. vendors, and uh, like right now, I wouldn't be surprised if one of my posts just pop up on online. So oh, it's never nice. really me doing it physically. I do it all in yeah. front. And do you look? Um, do you look to see like when's the best time of the day to post all yeah. that type of stuff? It's yeah. a really quick Google search. It depends. Yeah. It changes a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, if you if you do a quick Google search, it'll tell you by the day. Monday at this time is good. Wednesday at this time. Yeah. Sunday. So, you know, you just keep that chart available when you're doing your post and you just schedule it out like that. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's yeah. cool, man. Um, just to bridge to the next question, um, so I think it might tie into the hurdle. What's one thing that you wish you knew when you first started your business? Like, is there one thing that stands out like, damn, I knew that when I first started. You know what? In the beginning, when I first started, I was doing it. That's mm -hmm. the sad part. I was very <laughs> much a part of being taking care of my relationships. Yeah. Um, I might not have been the best photographer, mm -hmm. but I was always following up with clients. I was very heavy on my social media. I was mailing people letters. And then I started really getting into the technical side of production and really learning from a master. And my whole head got engulfed in how do I technically take the most perfect picture yeah and that's that actually took me away from my audience took me away from my base and yeah. it, and it wasn't until recently that i was thinking about adwords and what's it called seo and mm. how am i going to scale when uh i went to a seminar and i just realized everybody was talking about relationships mm -hmm. you know you could throw money into google all you want but take care of your relationships yeah and that'll be your more. base and uh you know it's it's worked out for me. So now I'm actually going back and nice. doing what I started nice. and making an effort that, you know, Mother's Day, how many mothers have I done business with? Yeah. Send the card, send the text. Mm -hmm. Father's Day, Christmas. I have so many clients. When those holidays come, the first two or three hours of my day is reaching out to all those people that supported me and Gabrielle. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, networking is is huge. Um, are, you, are you part of a networking group? Great question. This is the first year I've ever done it. Believe it or not, I never even knew what it was. Yeah. But I joined an organization called Bally Business Association of Long Island. Okay. And uh, once a week, every Tuesday, we meet at a diner. We have breakfast together, and it's a referral-based program. Okay. So every season, there is a, is a business owner from uh, hardwood floors to general contractors, real electrician, real estate. Yeah. I'm the photographer of the group. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm in a similar type of group. Yeah, I wish I would have known earlier yeah. about that too. Because, <laughs> you know. how, how did you? Uh, how are you liking the uh, the meetings and everything? You think it's it's something that's helped? I I know it takes a while to build. Exactly. But what's your thoughts on it so far? So far, it's good. In the beginning, honestly, it was a little bit uh, intimidating. It was new to me. I was the only person yeah. of color in the group, mm -hmm. so I was a little standoffish and shy in the beginning. Um, but you know what? It's not just about going. To the network meeting once a week mm -hmm. it's about meeting with people outside the network meeting i learned yeah so what every chance i get once a week i take somebody from that meeting and we have a cup of coffee or we go to the bar or we have lunch mm -hmm. and build that one-on-one -on -one relationship let me find out your business what yeah. make kind of what you're doing what makes you different yeah and how can i you know how can i get your referrals so yeah now I'm, I'm, way to do it. I'm about a year in and although i don't get i might not get a couple referrals from these people or mm -hmm. that person they give me the introductions that I need. Oh, yeah. I know a wedding planner. Oh, my my friend actually owns that catering hall. Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. It, you gotta I, stick with it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like certain industries and in those types of group too, they're tough to 
send referrals to certain groups. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, so for me, it's easy for the mortgage guy to refer me home insurance because he sees it every single day. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I might not talk to somebody every day that's going to get married or that exactly. needs a, a photo shoot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So certain groups, it's tough. Even like we had a financial advisor in our group. It's, man. And, you know, he only takes investments over 250,000. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> you know, exactly. I don't know too many of those people, but, uh, um, let's go back to, um, I was listening back to the first podcast a little bit and you were telling me how about your, um, how your parents and how they're from Puerto Rico. Oh yeah. Um, so do, do you think, I don't know if it really ties in, but do you think that your parents being from family, being from Puerto Rico, do you think that influences your photography at all good question um i don't know if it i don't know if it, even if it's puerto rico or if it's photography but i know mm. my family influenced me is just really being the best i could be at whatever it is yeah you know making my bed forget about it i had to make it like 20 times for my mom <laughs> to get it right yeah, yeah. so uh, we have a lot of pride mm-hmm. in that island um we're very prideful people and man i wish i could do my wedding photography in puerto rico but yeah. my, my support system's here. My business is here. Maybe one day I could branch out there. But, um, you know, just, just visiting that island every year and having a different identity outside mm-hmm. of the one I have as, a, as an American yeah. is huge. And I don't know how many people have that. Yeah. Some Puerto people, Rico is beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love, I love it, the island. We're actually actively working, me and my fi- fiance, to help Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. With they, all the earthquakes, right? They had uh, constant earthquakes for 14 days straight. Yeah. How, I, I heard they had like it was a six... Yeah. point whatever magnitude but it was more than one or two oh it's a bunch there's, there's a bunch of them happening there's a, a tremendous amount of tre- tremors but mm-hmm. they're at the three point you know those aren't even small tremors yeah so it's like so, the aftershock i guess yeah right? lots of aftershock is still happening in fact the people i talk on the ground with they say it's scarier than hurricane maria because mm-hmm. hurricane maria had a beginning middle and end yeah this is just ongoing this is ongoing where they have elderly people they have babies that are they're scared to sleep inside their houses because of they don't know when the next big one's happening. So yeah. we have tons of people sleeping outside uh, in Sorry. the elements. So mm-hmm. what uh, a group of men decided to do, I have 14 men dedicated until February 1st mm-hmm. to collect as many sleeping bags, tents, toiletries, solar lights. Anything we could do is kind of like a friendly competition. Yeah, Who could yeah. get the most stuff? Mm-hmm. And on February 1st, all 14 men are g- going to combine their resources and we're going to pack it up at my boy's warehouse uh, we already took care of logistics of shipping and distribution. Okay. And now it's kind of like, you know what? We all have a network. We all have people that care. You know, I made it a point to, out of my 14 men, let's not come out of our pocket. Yeah. You know, if we have to, we will. But mm-hmm. the power of asking, yeah. the power of going to your network and saying, you know, do you have a sleeping bag in the basement that you haven't used? How many mm-hmm. of us have tenting, tent equipment that we've never used for the last yeah. five years? Yeah. You know, we have elderly people. We have children outside sleeping in... And it's the horrible. elements, and they could really use the, yeah, the supplies. Um, what's what are we doing in the U.S. to help? Like, do you know of anything that's going on? Like, is there like a fund that Puerto Rico should be getting access to? Like, do you know anything? Oh, that's in, going in terms on of that? political, great question. I try to stay at the grassroots level. Yeah, I'm one guy. When I started, it was just me and my fiance. Mm. And I got this conversation a lot about Trump and the U.S. government and mm-hmm. statehood, and you know what? It's not where I decide to put my energy. Yeah, it's too much to know. It's man. too much to know. It's, it's my thing, you know, when I started, I put my camera on my back. I went into the mountains of Puerto Rico, where where not a lot of people were going because mm-hmm. usually they fix up the tourist areas, all the important areas. But there's certain people in, within the mountains that get forgotten about. Yeah. So at the grassroots level, and that's what I intend to do: get all my supplies. And although Hispanic Federation and there's yeah. there's incredible organizations doing good work. Yeah. I would rather give all that stuff to my my contacts on the ground yeah. that know those small little nooks that need help. Yeah. The big I, ones are going to get help. The big areas are going to get everything, the federal yeah. funding. It's the little ones in the mountains mm-hmm. that I have personal relationships with people that would trek that stuff up there. Yeah. And how do you how do you guys ship it over there? You just great question. That's logistically the hardest thing for me to do my work. Mm. I have people with power saws, power saws, table saws, tons of water. Mm-hmm. It is so expensive to ship to Puerto Rico. Yeah. So what's awesome is um, I have resources with this 
it's called the Men's Empowerment Group, okay. uh, a group of men that we get together. We help each other out with different things. Mm-hmm. They have resources in the army that are shipping it. So oh, that's cool. This particular effort, we're uh, going to gather all our stuff up, and we're actually just going to give it to another plane that's sending it out there. Okay. Once it gets there, then my people on the ground will take it and kind of collectively, okay. you know, distribute it. Yeah. And w- when you say your people on the ground, do you have any family that's still living over there? Yeah, I got Are a tremendous okay? amount of family. Everybody's okay because they're more by San Juan. Okay. This happened in Ponce area. Okay. So it's like the opposite of it. Even though they felt it. Is that like it, the south? That is the north, it? south. Southwest, southwest corner okay. of the island. Okay. But being that after Hurricane Maria, I went there 10 times after the hurricane, mm. I met a lot of these awesome smaller groups. So, so I would basically go to a town, meet with a church you know, official or meet mm. with a, a government official, and he'll say, all right, Jeff wants to do this. And would they'll literally say, yeah. hey, Huang, go up to the mountain with Jeff. We're knocking on doors. So I really wanted to do the smaller, smaller effort to get items directly where they need to go that's awesome uh, who would who would somebody contact if they wanted to donate supplies or donate yeah. money so right now you can reach out to me my number is 516-984-1719 okay. um we are we are partnering up with different nonprofits for shipment distribution all that stuff so it's not going through my nonprofit. yeah this is more a collect a collective effort mm. so right now you know it's not if it's money great i got people in puerto rico that are gonna so like I got a lot of Home Depot cards. Yeah. Instead of buying stuff here and then shipping it, we're gonna buy it in Home Depot with my connects, and then they'll they'll send it over there. Okay, if it's supplies, cool. actual tents and stuff like that, yeah. we're gonna collect it. I live in Farmingdale. Like I'll come to you. You can come to mm-hmm. me, and we're gonna ship that all together with all my other guys. Yeah, dude, that's great. Yeah, that's great. You're doing that, man. It's a higher purpose. You know, honestly, in terms of business, this is a business podcast. Yeah. This is my higher purpose. I love to do it. Yeah. But it only makes sense. Like if you're in business. It's, it's like the new form. You should do it. You should be giving back. Yeah. No, it's true, man. Because when you give back, the whole you, have purpose a, of it. you have a bigger community. And people tend to want to do business with somebody that's, that, that is doing that kind of work. So yeah, when it comes true, to Box of Dreams Photography, sure, I want to be known as an incredible wedding photography studio that does incredible work. Yeah. But I want them to know that with the money that I generate, uh-huh. portions of that go back to helping people. That makes sense, man. That's yeah. awesome that you're doing that. Thanks for doing that. Thank you, brother. Um, so spit. What what kind of spinning off that? What's because it sounds like you have a lot going on. What's um? Do you have goals for twenty twenty? Do you have any goals that stand out that you want to share? Twenty twenty, yeah. Well, uh, me and my fiance just put a bid on a house. Congrats! Uh, that's our expenses, a, that's a process. Are, yeah, our expenses <laughs> are probably gonna double, so yeah, it's scary. Yeah. But um, in terms of twenty twenty, my goals is really to try to iron down my books. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, get the business side of the company really locked down so I know what's going in, what's going out, and how I could scale. Yeah. I also introduced a photo booth to the business. Okay. Oh, was, yeah, so that online. Yeah, so it's cool. I mean, I, I should have done it years ago because, like, I just did a corporate event for a Christmas party and I made mm-hmm. X amount of dollars. They asked for the photo booth. I doubled my, you know, oh, nice. my income for that event. Nice. The so, photo booths are fun too when I see them at weddings and stuff. You know, people always, you know, yeah. they're boozing up, they hop in there. <laughs> exactly. <a> pictures. <laughs> it spices things up. It's actually yeah. a modern twist of an old classic. It's a digital photo booth. Okay. So we really don't do prints and we don't do the props. Mm-hmm. Everything goes on digital. So it's almost like Snapchat. So the glasses will just pop up on your face. And instead of getting the print, the picture sends, get, gets sent directly to your phone. That's cool. So people tend to love it because they're like they're constantly just you know everybody's yeah, yeah. on their social media these of days. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. No, that's wild. Well, dude, listen, it's good. It's good you got those goals. Like I said, it seems like you got a lot going on, but a lot, of, a lot of good things. Um, is there anything that you want to leave off with? I think we almost hit a half hour already. So, well, you make it, you make it an easier, you, yeah. you know. Yeah, a little easier. It's the, better than the, the first best one. At public speaking, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, that dude, went neither quick. am I. <laughs> that's what. Listen, that's why I started this thing. I'm like. I needed to do a more stuff marketing and I'm like, what's, you know, some of my weaknesses include like, I'm just not great around the group of people and I'm not great at having one-on-one conversations. So I'm like, how do I get better at that? And it's basically just throw yourself into the fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Put yourself in these situations and eventually you get more comfortable with it over time. Um, back to what you were saying about the networking and you know, when you first get to the group, it's intimidating and it is. I've absolutely, I've been doing networking for a few years now and it's, even still, every once in a while, it's like, 
man, there's, it's almost like a switch that mm-hmm. like, all right, so let's say you leave the house, maybe you're feeling a little tired, but when you get to the meeting, man, you gotta, you gotta flip that switch on Yeah, and you really gotta, you really gotta stay focused and listen to what people are saying and give ideas and, you know, make sure you're inputting to the conversation, you know? Yeah. So, and it, it, the same thing when you go to an event, um, so some of these networking groups, I'm not sure if yours has it, but they'll say, Hey, in a month we're going to meet at, you know, some bar in Farmingdale yeah. and we're all just going to, you know, get together and shoot the shit type of thing, you mm-hmm. know? And then that's a whole different atmosphere. You just gotta, you know, ha- know how to mingle and have a normal conversation. So, you know, the more you put yourself in the position, the better I think you get at it. Like anything else, you know, yeah, it's kind of yeah. cliche, but you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it goes back to, you know, on what my goal is for 2020. Now that you say all that, and it's happening in all factors of my life right now, mm. is to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. And I re- and w- w- everything you said is about putting yourself in situations that are a little uncomfortable, but you do it anyway, and you keep doing it until you get better. Yeah. And so, dude, look, look at this, like us talking into a microphone, camera pointed at <laughs> us. Like it's, you know, it's a little intimidating in the beginning, but I mean, I've done, this is the 19th episode now. Nice. And I'm still a little like, okay, mm-hmm. all right, the camera's on, you know, watch what you say. But, you know, I, I try not to let that stuff influence me. Mm-hmm. But back to what we were saying, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. And you give, and you provide value at the end of the day. Like, yeah. you're giving me a platform to speak. How often do I have the opportunity to practice speaking about my company and what I want to yeah. do? So, and hopefully your audience will see it. So you, you provide a, a value. So. Thank you, man. Yeah. And when I look, it's funny because I tried to look up like other podcasts in the area that maybe I could go on their podcast. You know, there's really not that many. There's really not that many in this local area. I'm sure as if you get into the city, there's probably more, but out here, there's only maybe a handful that I could, that I could find that I could even reach out to the person and say, Hey, you know, I'd love to be on your show type of thing. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's how it starts. You see a need and now you're going to fill it. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah, man. Um, so I know you gave your phone number before. If someone wants to reach out to you, Social media, email, whatever you yeah. want to share. So my uh, my company is Box of Dreams Photography. Okay. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Uh, that's our website too, www.boxofdreamsphotography.com. If you're interested interested in helping Puerto Rico, you can reach my cell at 516-984-1719. Awesome, man. Uh, 